Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, run it back. Good run Wednesday up, morning. This is back. Run It Back. Yeah, yeah. I would like to introduce everyone right off the bat. Our good friend, the wisdom that is us, Stadium Insider, Sham Sharania, who we're going to get to in about two seconds. Chandler Parsons, Lou Will. I know we have no intro That's for That's all us. we get? My name's Michelle. Uh, but Shams, we, we do start with you because the report yesterday, Mark Cuban. Making moves, making money, what's going on? Mark Cuban, one of the most popular NBA owners of all time. He has sold a majority stake to the Adelson family. It's a casino tycoon, $3.5 billion plus Woo. valuation for Mark Good Cuban. God. He maintains a stake in the team and also full basketball control moving forward. And the initial reaction from everyone is why, why would you sell right now? Yeah. Why would Mark Cuban sell right now? And there were a few factors for what I'm told. One of them was just the real estate arena development that Mark Cuban feels like by partnering with the Adelson family, he's going to be able to bring potentially a new arena and, and just a better real estate plan to Dallas. And then probably the bigger component here is the casino development in Dallas. Mark Cuban has been talking about it for the better part of the last year. Is building a casino district in Dallas, bringing the first casino to Dallas. They're working with the Adelson family to get these, these laws passed in Dallas. Uh, that would get it. And so he's been wanting a new arena, wanting a casino district, and he feels by bringing in this influx of cash from the Adelson family, he will finally be able to do it. And at the end of the day, in order to compete at the, in, at the NBA level, at the highest of levels now, you need money. And you need a lot of it. And Mark Cuban, he's never been shy of delegating responsibility. And now he's going to have a, a big partner, a majority partner, to share the, the responsibilities with from a cash perspective. So it, it was a massive move and probably one of the most unique setups in an ownership transfer, at least initially. Yeah, because he retains control of basketball ops. It's like the best deal of all time, unless I'm missing something. Well, I think we'll see how long that lasts for, right? When you buy a team or when you buy any company, you can kind of leave someone on for a certain time period. I can't imagine he's going to be running basketball ops for a very long time. But, look, this is the best of both worlds for him. Now he can, he can be himself. He can spend time with his family that he's been missing out on years, summer, trips during the season. Uh, he can do that now. And also, when it's not the biggest sale of a team, but – He's getting close to three billion dollars. Like he's netting. Sarver, for, Sarver got six hundred million basically. So to look at that, he's making a lot of money, and now he can just kind of have way less stress. He can he can still keep a stake and run the team for however long. But this is huge for him because again, there's there's bigger plans here. There's the Adelson family, we all know what they do. They're a resort, hospitality, casino company. They've is never they they've never had that in Texas. No, we so haven't. I think this is the the purchase of the Mavs. This is this is small beans in comparison of what's to come and you got to imagine that Mark's going to be involved in that as well which is uh, casinos make more money than NBA billions games. of dollars of revenue billions. per year that could be happening here in Dallas and that's because the Adelson family that's with Mark Cuban his vision he's been working on this for literally the last year getting the Adelson family in God well because does that mean we're one step closer to getting our FanDuel apps open and are we going to legalize weed I'm just checking Texas I want to see all the things that we're working it's all on happening. Um, just you know before I head back uh, all of that <laughs> Said Lou, I want to ask you if you're a free agent, um, do you do you keep up on who owns teams? Does it affect any decision making? What what does it do for you as the player? Honestly, no. They're usually not a part of the process unless you're a guy that's going to come in and change the complete trajectory of that organization. If you're a superstar level guy, that owner is probably going to be a part of the process. Hmm. Other than that, it's business as usual for the general managers and the other. Uh, partners in that organization and they just don't have the time. They're too busy building casinos. Fair. See, <laughs> I, I agree with, with Lou. During your playing career, it doesn't really matter, right? They're going to give you the resources. They're going to provide for you. Maybe some are, are you know, more frugal than others or more, uh, you know, outrageous with the spending. But I look at it like a huge positive. This is a family that has billions and billions <laughs> of dollars that post-career they can help you more than just an owner that, that doesn't point. have this going on. So if they're talking about building all these casinos and resorts and stuff in Dallas, I want to be a part of that after my career, which is more money than I'm probably going to make while I play in Dallas. So I think it's huge. And to have, you know, there's Balmer and now there's the Adelson family. There's no one even close to the wealth. So it's, it's, it's a huge move for them. And again, the Mavs is just the first piece to this whole puzzle. Okay, so 16 seasons he's been doing Shark Tank. 
This is all happening, these announcements, within hours or days of each other. Is he something else going on? Because <laughs> you know people are going to be like, oh, he's running for president. That makes or me having sad. A cr- yeah. what, the Shark Tank of it all? I love Mark Cuban. I know. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I talked to him yesterday, and he... he he wants to spend time with his kids more. He's got but a 14 year old. people say that and then it passes. Yeah, I, listen, and yeah, I wanted my family to come here for a week. They came for a week. It was great. This is a, a week. They have, they have a 14 year old, a 17 year old, a 20 year old. He, he's missed some time. They're going off to college. They're going to be gone soon. So he feels like he needs to spend more time with them. I think he's going to be on Shark Tank through 2025. So it's not ending right now. But yeah, that's an that's end to an era that I know everybody loves right? watching. And, and trust me, he's still going to be involved in investing and things like that. But he's just no longer going to be on that show. I think why everyone thought this was so surprising and so stunning is we never thought Mark Cuban would ever, ever. sell even a little piece of mm-hmm. the team, right? And, and, and even to the point where it's, it's a partnership and now it's a majority stake he's given up. And, I mean, he's been on record. He's he like, can, but he, if he can keep control... Like, yeah, the fun that's part a win, still. That's and, a win-win. And for if Mark Cuban, that that's, the, that's the thing right now, right? Is like I, I keep a, a, a stake in the game. Keep your seats. Ownership wise. Yeah. I can keep my courtside seat. I can <laughs> yeah. keep traveling with the team sitting on I literally just saw him at the Clippers uh, at the Clippers Mavs game on Saturday night and he and he was literally sitting <laughs> Right. On the bench yeah. of the it's team, good life. And, and that'll continue. And look, the Adelsons—they've never done this before, right? The, the the father had passed in recent years, and this was the kid's dream, right? So, but they—they they need help. They would—they would love Mark Cuba to stay on. They're not just going to come in here firing people, thinking they know what they're talking about basketball-wise. It's a, it's, it's a business move for them. So you still have to have basketball-savvy people that know the ins and outs of the NBA That's and smart how to run that. a team. So. It's a good start because a lot of these owners want to do it themselves and think they're smarter yeah, than Carolina Panthers, David <laughs> Pepper. We're they hire now. coaches and GMs and then don't listen to them. That's not going to be the Allison. They're going to hire the right people. This is crazy. When I saw that, I was like, Mark Cuban? I never, I never thought that would happen. Um, we did have some games. We had a lot of games actually last night. This one, you two, party, mm. prop party, uh, Warriors, Kings, but Malik Monk, mm-mm-mm, sinking them. Kings win this one, 124-123. They'll play at home versus the Pelicans. They win West Group C. Uh, Fox had 29-9-7. Monk with 21 points off the bench, and including, of course, that game winner that you just saw there. Uh, it, look, it felt like a playoff game. It looked like a playoff game. They were down 26 points. I don't even know how they got to that point. They advanced to the quarterfinals of the end season. You guys were talking before the show started. We're all in, right? This oh. in season thing's for real. We got the bug. Yeah. I'm in. It happened. Because here's the th- uh, never on a Tuesday late November never. am I watching this intense of a game. This was a playoff atmosphere. When the Kings won this game and made this comeback, there were people jumping in the crowd, <laughs> hugging each other. It's November. It's a Tuesday in November. Tuesday. Like, it's ridiculous. So, shout out, you know, Adam Silver. He, again, there were some, you know, worries and concerns about this. I know I was one of them, but. This is great. It's providing a, such a more spark, such a more entertaining, uh, amusing value. And this game last night, like I said, this was playoff intensity. I do still have issues with some of the things, like why is there four games? Why is there not eight games? This, this three, huh. the, why is there the Magic and the, and the Cavs can go three and one, but this point differential thing is a little confusing. Because again, Kenny Smith said it last night, what if you're in a bracket that they play fast and, and right. they're going to score more points? You're already at a disadvantage. Or like the Knicks, they get to play the the, the, the Hornets and the Wizards, just beat the brakes off them and, and kind of stack their points. So there are some issues. It's the first time that we're seeing this, but man, it is exciting and fun to watch. And let's show, let's show some love to our sisters. The WNBA has been doing a Commissioner's Cup for some, some time now. Um, they haven't had the, the, the media like we have. They haven't had the backing that we have. To, but this has been a layout that they've tried um, that's worked for them. And, and I've enjo- I enjoyed it. Last night I was, I was all in. I was uh, enjoying the point differentials. I was enjoying the guys complaining about it and everything like that. But th- these games were exciting last night. You know what else is crazy, too? Like a team like the Kings, this was a playoff game. So when oh, yeah. the actual real playoffs come, this is great rehearsal. This is great practice because this is experience that they normally wouldn't have in a late November regular season game against their big brother that they could never beat. They finally got off the hump of that and advance in this new play- uh, in-season tournament. Really cool idea. I mean, they've won eight of their last ten. Like, what? It, when you look at this Kings team, if you had to, what's missing? Anything? It's hard to say something's missing yeah. when they're rolling like that. And how they walked uh, Golden State down last night, being down 26, 
with everything going on in, on their home court. Those guys had a uh, look, gotta like, look. Yeah, gotta check, like out, the, yeah, yeah, check out the, the check out the atmosphere. It's, never... it's an exciting time to be an NBA fan, especially in, in Sacramento, when a lot of their entertainment is, is based around this basketball team. These guys are delivering for their communities. Dope. And they got the dynamic duo. They got Sabonis. They got Fox. Sabonis had an off night last night, but then they get. Oh, they he did. Get, what happened? They, he he, he was under on your oh. rebounds. Well done. I missed both of mine. But by one year, point. Uh, Sasha, but he he came in. He really was a spark. He didn't play in the first half. He was an unbelievable second half. Malik Monk is legitimately mm. the third best player coming off the bench. It's a luxury to have someone like that. But to me, again, this is more about the Warriors and their struggles and their issues because this was a, this was a glaring, glaring loss to me. I, I'm glad you brought that up because on the reverse here, they've lost eight of their last ten, Lou. So if you're this Warriors team, where are you mentally right now? I could imagine that it's bad. Hmm. And it's, it's, it's dark in the locker room right now. When you go through stretches like that, it's hard. It's a, it's a tough working environment to come into when you're trying to get right. And um, that game last night was... Uh, demoralizing. It just it felt bad. You know, it felt bad. Turn turnovers. Um, Draymond getting into his tiffs again, and Steph didn't make shots coming down the stretch, and it, it just looked it just looked bad all the way around. There's something missing. The magic is missing. It looked like somebody's taking their Space Jam basketball from this Warriors <laughs> team, and it's just it's just not there right now. And you could tell watching this team, especially the Draymond situation. Guys are rolling their eyes. Guys mm -hmm. are guys are sick of it. Guys are who who goes and acts like this and gets another technical foul, almost ejected. Your first game back from a no. five game suspension. No self awareness. It, it's it's I don't understand. I understand this is the energy he brings. This is who he is. But when it starts getting to this level where you're, it's a distraction, you're hurting your team. It's a problem. And you can see Steve Kerr, he literally had to take him out of the game. I also thought Steve Kerr made a horrible sub with taking out Moody, who had the hot hand in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he had, had 11 in the fourth quarter you take him he, out of the game. I don't know why he did that, but this was also me and Lou were talking about. You, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but yeah. you actually can hear the Golden State fans booing when crazy. Moody came out of the game. And nobody even noticed. Crazy. There was one where Clay set an illegal screen and Moody came off and they called the foul, but he made the three right after he made the first two threes, and he took him right out. I was like, why, why would he do that? But it's... it's it was, I don't know, it was it was mind-boggling, and it looked like the Warriors, this is another thing about the in-season tournament, the Warriors were trying, they were up five or seven points, they were trying to win by 12 last night. Right. And it ended up costing them the actual game, because they were coming down, they were playing faster than usual, with two minutes, three minutes left, and so it's funny, because this in-season tournament, they obviously wanted to advance, but it ended up costing them the actual game for the playoff seeding and for the future of the season, so it works both ways, and I think they got a little greedy trying to win by 12. I'm actually glad you brought that up, because I think some teams could be like, oh, you know, it's just an in-season tournament, nobody cares, but you were saying they were actually trying to win, and then you lose the way you lose when you're up as big as you are. So. In that locker room afterwards, something like that, with all the dream on of it all, all the points that were lost, T talk to me about that. Is there somebody that talks? Is it silent? What is there anger? I, mean, I think you're pissed off. I think depends you, on your leadership. Yeah, you 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 just blew a very very big lead to a team that you've kind of dominated in recent years and. I don't think people are going to look to the Draymond thing. That's not why they lost, but they got outplayed by a younger, hungrier team. And it's interesting. At halftime, they were up 17. They, the spread of the second half was six, which means that if the if the, if the Kings covered that second half mm. spread, it means the Warriors weren't advancing, and, the, and the Kings were advancing. So it was interesting how they did that, and they, it looked like the Kings just wanted it more, honestly. I'm, I'm not pressing the panic button on this not Warriors yet. team, but... I, like, even the last play of the game, like, Klay Thompson, if you look back at that replay, the Steph shot, I'm never going to hate on a Steph shot. Never. Klay Thompson was wide open. You could tell walking off the floor, Klay Thompson, uh, you know, he, he, he has his little arm, you know, like, he, he wanted that shot. He was wide open. He had a better look. Steph, I'm never going to bet against a, a Steph shot, you and, know. Yeah. And they but could also he take... He was, like, double teamed. Klay was wide open. I think, I mean, these guys have all been kind of out of sort. Wig started the year out, out of source. Now he's starting to play better. Klay Thompson started out of source. Now he's starting to... I think he's got two 20-point games in the last three, four yeah. games. Wiggs is 29 and 10. But then even the substitution, you know, with, with Moody. We're not used to seeing Steve... Like, Steve Kerr is usually on point. You know what else we're seeing with this Golden State team? They've been dominant for so long. Teams are starting... Oh, they're human again. Right. Mm -hmm. And teams are getting up to beat the hell out of this basketball team because they've done it for so long and they've done it in fashion, showboating, having yeah. a bunch of fun. And so now they're coming back down to earth and teams are having their way with this team. Yeah, we haven't seen them struggle like this and people like that. People they're like, vulnerable they, now. Yeah, it's like the bully's getting the bullied. The bully's getting bullied, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but you can take a good thing with this because Andrew Wiggins looked like Andrew Wiggins last night. Clay Thompson had the confidence coming off screen shooting the ball. So there are some positive to take from this because those two guys are vital to their season. But there were also some 
injuries last night, the big ones actually. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're if you're the Warriors, you have to have a level of concern today because Gary Payton the second that calf injury that he suffered that didn't look that didn't look good, and he he's having tests. He had tests last night. He's having more tests this morning as we speak, and and they're going to get a better idea of just how bad that calf injury is. We'll see. And then Chris Paul, you saw him, the videos of him limping in, mm -hmm. in, in the hallway. He's got a lower leg injury. Don't know the severity of that yet, but, at, at, you know, he's played a lot of years in the NBA. Um, it's, you know, it, it's definitely a cause of concern for the Warriors and two guys that are essential to their rotation. Yeah, I think at some point it's none of it is good. Uh, Warriors are not, but you know what? We talked about them like this last year too. Like yeah. They they struggle. I don't I don't know what happens with this Warriors team. I do know a team that is bad, and I can pretty much bet on that every time. Bulls. Uh, they played <laughs> last night. Well, I don't I don't know how to segue. That was the worst one ever. Um, wow, that court. All right, Celtics. I got, I got Billy D. Massive. <laughs> Matt, one twenty four ninety seven. They win East Group C because uh, they won the tiebreaker with both the Magic and the Nets. They will play Indiana in the corner finals. That's kind of fun. Brown thirty eight. Six, Tatum, 21, 7, and 4. Um, this one was the Hack a Drummond situation in the fourth, despite the fact that they were up by 30. Mm. Well, it's because of the point differential that you referenced a few minutes ago, and Billy Donovan was not happy about it, uh, obviously. Do you have an issue with the fact that the Celtics did what they did? No, because this is now the new in-season tournament, and this is one of the protocols that you have to follow, and you're going to have to get used to this. And it's, if this is a non-in-season tournament game, yeah, then, then we're fighting, then Fair. there's a tech. But if this is what it takes for them to advance, which, by the way, it was, and they advanced, you got to do it. And I, I love that he had the, you know, enough respect to Billy to basically tell him, like, look, I, I have to do this. And if you're a <laughs> so player awkward. on the Celtics, you really, appreciate that your coach is literally going above and beyond to to have you advance and to get to that bonus so it's weird it's new bread too yeah like yeah he yeah, gets a, a bonus point. too so it's like <laughs> it's you respect it as a player it's going to get real obnoxious i think it will lead to some sort of altercations eventually because you don't want that to happen to you especially when you're down but it's, it's, it's the name of the game now. Well, from top to bottom, everybody just has to recalibrate what they're thinking. Listen, on Tuesdays and Fridays, <laughs> these are the rules. And this is the lay of the land for these particular games. They've tried to do it with the courts. They've tried the, the, the how much money they've spent on advertising mm. for this tournament. So with that comes circumstances, right? And so if you're, if you're a team that you have to win by 34 points, all the unwritten rules and all of that stuff, on Tuesdays and Fridays, they are out. I Everybody has to retrain their brains for these particular games. This is a different, Can't different be environment. Can't sensitive. That's yeah, it. this, yeah, it's a different, completely different thing. And so, I, I listen. You got to do what you got to do, man. And these games are getting interesting. And so, some of the players kind of just got to get over what they're used to and how we're used to dealing with like, these type of things. What would we be saying if, for example, it came down somehow the point differential and they missed it by a few because they didn't? Right. Go for, we would be saying, well, did you not right. know the rules? Why 100%. did you do that? I just think we, we're just so used to yeah. uh, the sportsmanship part of it. And, and like we mentioned, the unwritten rules, sometimes it's, it's considered disrespectful to do those things. <laughs> we kind of got to wash that out of our brains and get used to what's new. Well, obviously, the guys after the game were asked about it. Jalen Brown, um, this is what he had to say about running up the score. It's tough because, uh, I mean, that's just not how the game is supposed to be played. You know, um, one, you got to respect your opponents. And, and two, like, you know, it's just a weird setup. You know, we understand the rules, but like, if I was another team, I'd be upset. <laughs> First of all, it's the coziest outfit ever. Looked very comfortable. Look but he's, he's like, he's kind of having a hard time with it. It was interesting to hear him say that. But this is because it's what we're used to. Yeah. Right? It's what we're used to. If there's a fast break and you're up even six points with three seconds, you don't go and lay the ball in. That's just what we're accustomed to. Like he said, it's respecting the game, respecting the opponent, and just know you're going to have to play this team again. Now, this, the Bulls aren't very good, the Celtics, so the game's not going to really matter. But if this comes to a point where it's Celtics versus Bucks or Celtics versus Philly and this happens, they're not going to forget it. And so, but that, again, that's, those are the rules. That's, that's just what you now has to be the new norm, right? That's what it is. It's exciting. People, I think, love it. I even kind of start, the courts are even starting to grow on me. Oh, wow. My wife walked Whoa. by me the other day was like, what is that court? And then I have to explain it. And so maybe, now I'm starting to think that was brilliant nah. because now people are asking it about brilliant. it. And it's, it's creating more buzz and people are talking about it, Lou, ugly or not. So. Lou hates it so much. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> It gets the people going. It, it gets does. the people it's going. It's provocative. It's honestly really, really brilliant. Wow. Okay. The unwritten the, rule. Wait, wait, wait. 
What the courts are yeah, brilliant, brilliant now? No, they're hideous, but they're the people are talking about the it. Is people are literally be brilliant on and social hideous. media. People that don't know about basketball. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the people that don't know about basketball go by and see that and be like, what the hell is that core? Is it you know I think they mean? still keep walking. No, really? Ask a question first. <laughs> I, I do think they ask the question. They do. They're I like, do what too. is that? I've never well, seen what, that. What, does that count as an years? engagement that they ask a question? Kind Remember? of. Positive, negative, it's an engagement. If they watch even a little bit, you're like, oh, this this looks different. What's, what's not all publicity? Go- yeah. You're getting jumped right now. No, you're getting jumped. What is it? No publicity. All, no, no. all publicity is not good well, publicity. Well, trust me, I agree with that, but some Whoever people don't. Whoever made that saying needed some good publicity. Yeah, there's a couple guys in the getting publicity right now that probably don't want it. Oh, that was interesting. That's Shout not a segue. Shout out Conrad. Not a, <laughs> that's not a segue. You need to get uh, publicity. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. All right, fine. Um, Celtics Pacers will be who matches up in these quarterfinals. And if you don't remember, last time Celtics dropped 155 on them. Can they keep up this time around? Chandler. I mean, to score that many points, probably not. And it'll, and it'll be interesting now to see this knockout round, see the matchups. Now do they slow it down? Now do they go back to their normal pace? Do they continue to you know, put up these crazy numbers? This game was insane last time, so I <laughs> hope there's something similar to that. And, and But no, I don't think they're going to have that many points again. 155. That's crazy. That's crazy. By the way, you see there the winner of this will play the winner of Knicks Bucks. Bucks played last night, and this is how we got here. They beat the Heat. 131. This is a bad court. 131, 124. They win East Group B. <laughs> it can't be both, y'all. Uh, it's, it's bad. Y'all, gotta be, um, y'all gotta pick a side. This man. court sucks. This court sucks. <laughs> they host New York in the quarterfinals. Giannis with his 33, 10, and 5. Damian Lillard, 32, 9, and 4. It was close yeah, game. No Jimmy B in the lineup. Hey, um, spin cycle him. A combined 65 for both Giannis and Dame. Okay, I mean, do they, look, the bench had 21. Do you have to have those two guys always be at the top to have a shot? You would love them to be, at least one of them, and then you have to get contributions from guys they got last night. You gotta have Chris Middleton, you gotta have Lopez, you gotta have these guys all contribute. Obviously, those two guys are the focal point. Those are the two guys that are gonna get the you know the most offensive load every single night. But this team is deep. This team has a lot of other people that can contribute. So anytime you can get 30 plus from both of them, it's going Ooh. to help. But yeah, when you throw in 16 from Beasley and 17 from Middleton and 12 from Lopez, now all of a sudden you have a balanced attack. It makes them even that much harder to guard. Uh, oh, I thought you could say something. <laughs> Damian Lil- oh, look, I, I don't know when, what I game did. it will I, be. I just realized I didn't, I, I don't have a zip up jacket thingy. Shams <laughs> and CP got off. Well, I don't either. We didn't get yeah. the memo. We didn't get the memo. Yeah, we, well, maybe we did get the memo. Well, we, we didn't get the memo. I you guys. I'm sorry. I like that. Good. On the non-zip. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really like what they're wearing, Lou. I think we're just fine. I, I think we're good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Lillard, one day we'll look normal in a Bucks uniform. It's, I'm still not there, but he seems to be acclimating just fine. Uh, they've won nine of their last 10 when he's averaging 28, seven and four. All right, he can stay at this level. They seem to be okay. Is this what has to happen, Lou? Yeah, just had to give it some time. You know, let him get acclimated with the city and his, his new digs. Hmm. Still kind of weird for me to even see him in a it's Bucks uniform. So, weird. And so to see him performing at a high level, he's getting that confidence, knowing exactly who he is, how he's gonna play for this ball, ball team. It was a pleasure to watch last night, and, and he's going to be very instrumental in the, the success of this team going down the stretch. And he's going to have to be the best player on a lot of nights. Mm. I felt like last night, though, it was both of them. But, you know, it's gonna be, he's going to be very important for this team down the stretch. Yeah, he's just... Oof. I also the campaign signing too. He was so good in Phoenix. Every time someone was out, I, he has he's been off to a, a slow start. But there's going to be games that Damian Lillard doesn't have it that he misses. Campaign's sure. going to get that opportunity in those minutes, just like he did in Phoenix, and he's got to take advantage of it as well. For you, what stood out about this win? Well, I think uh, Giannis and Damian Lillard both scoring 60 plus points in three straight games. Like that to me shows it's all about their chemistry. They're going to go as far as those guys lead for sure. But their chemistry, they're starting to figure it out. You're starting to see them both play well together. And the other thing is Chris Middleton. He had a couple clutch shots late in the game, 17 points, eight rebounds. He's getting up there again in minutes. I think that is probably the most positive takeaway that I had from last night. Seeing Chris Middleton hit a clutch shot, that reminds me of a couple years ago when they won the championship. That reminds me of why he's so important for this team. And if he's not going to be – because in a lot of ways, Dame Lillard might be their closer. We know about Dame time. (laughs) <laughs> but Chris Middleton also can close games. Um, they will now face the Knicks at home next week. The first time they played, um, the Bucks won it. It was a close game, though. So, who you got? Bucks. Bucks by double digits. Dang it. 
Box double, double digits. digits. Make it a cool 20. Let's just. Oh, a 20? Yeah, piece? let's just blow it out the water. Yeah, because okay, now, water now you're down to the nitty gritty, right? You're in the quarterfinals. You're trying to get to. Is this. In, is this these are in Vegas, yeah. these games already? Or no, that's the semis. No, that's, it's that's, that's the semis. Yeah, you're trying to get to Vegas. You're trying to. Get, the Bucks by double digits. Yeah, like we said, the, the three guys that's supposed like to be rolling for the Bucks are rolling. Yeah. So they're dangerous right now. I don't like the double digits win. I think that was an unnecessary prediction. I'm going to say it's not going to. Well, prove it in your problem. You think they're going to lose by nine? Yeah, that's by, no, <laughs> no, I did not say that. Um, we did have a, a, we had a jersey swap, a good old fashioned jersey swap. But oh yes, my of course. God. Okay. What are we doing? <laughs> What's this guy's deal? With I just love the Lopez brothers. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's his spirit I, angel. Maybe he really wants he to be a mascot. I heard the Lopez twins have a Disney-themed yes. shared house. Yes, they are you Disney this? freaks. Uh, what? They have a house. Comic that's book and Disney. Little. And it's all tricked out and like Disney stuff. Lou, Lou, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> no. Is that legal? What do you mean, what do you mean <laughs> is it legal? Uh, uh, it's let's, gross. Of all the things you could have in your house, that's what you're worried about? It's it a little, that's, that's, little that's suspect a little, for two little. grown twins to have. But there Disney are there is such a thing, and don't get me wrong, they creep me out. But there are such a thing as Disney adults, um, and these two are like comic book Where? Disney nerds. Yeah, yeah. in jail. <laughs> no. so on, on like the Instagrams <laughs> and the TikToks. Or, <laughs> what a prison. <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. Let's let's keep going. <laughs> you know what? I think they're I'm having cool. sweet, innocent fun. Uh, sweet, all right. Let's go to Thunder Timberwolves, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> T-Wolves top the Thunder. However, they do lose Edwards to injury. Um, he landed pretty hard during a dunk attempt. T-Wolves do eliminated from in-season tournament, which is kind of shocking a little bit. But you know, they, win, they walk away with the win, Shams. But the Anthony Edwards of it all, I think, is very concerning. Uh, did not return to this one. What's the latest? I mean, clearly it was a bad bruise. I mean, bad fall. Um, they, they diagnosed him with a hip contusion. There's going to be further testing, I'm told, this yeah. morning on that hip, just to make sure there's nothing else structurally wrong. Uh, but they, they, they hopefully dodged a bullet. We know he's played an MVP caliber level, even last night, 21 points, 12 points in, in the third quarter. So he's, he, he's been big time for them. They still win the game last night. Uh, but for now, just a hip contusion, further testing this morning. Yeah, that would, that would be a bad loss. But somehow they figured it out. I mean, they didn't have him in the fourth. Timberwolves get the win. Gobert. All right, Man. here he is. He and Chet in the fourth. Gobert puts up 17 points, 16 rebounds, four blocks. Okay, Rudy. Uh, right? Like, I, I feel like we spend a lot of time sort of mocking, making fun. Guys don't like him, whatever. <laughs> it's but... easy to score you ain't in a head lock, man. You know? <laughs> okay, really, Lou? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing right now? We have to, we have to give him some love. I mean, I mean he's look, doing it. this is a guy that's been defensive. <clears throat> Whoa. Hello. Defensive, defensive player of the year. He has the size. He has the mobility to switch pick and rolls to guard, uh, you know, point guards and shooting guards. So he has this capability for whatever his issues are off the court or whatever his person. I know him. I like him. <laughs> what, I, so, what issue? I've never played it's with him. He's just an unlikable guy. Yeah, I, I, right? I enjoy Rudy just Gobert. I, I've, I've spent actually a lot of time with him. I love that he's thriving now. I love that he's playing well. Listen, this trade for him last year, it didn't work. Mm -mm. Neither did the Kyrie Luka, Luka situation last year. But <sighs> everything good takes time. We're now starting to see Damian Lillard get his legs under him, and that's starting to work. Now, do we dare say that this trade <gasps> works it? The Minnesota Timberwolves are at top of the Western Conference. They're winning games. It's early, and they need Anthony Edwards healthy. But maybe this does work out. Maybe he can play with Cat, but... They're not going anywhere without Anthony they're, Edwards. Yeah, I was about to say, they're number one, but without Anthony Edwards, rain is coming. Have, have you guys ever had a fall like that? Have you guys ever had a hip contusion? I don't think, we ever, got, I don't think we ever got that high. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I, used fly, I used to fly a little bit, bro. My bad, my yeah, don't speak, for Lou. Some hot. Don't yeah, speak for Lou. Don't speak for Lou. It's been a while. Philly days? Yeah, it's been, it was, it's been a while, but. It seems very painful. And the hip. Have you ever felt like that, Lou? Bueno. I actually have, man. Um, I had beef with David Lee for years. Oh. I tried to dunk on him one time at, at Madison Square Garden. He guided me straight to the ground, and I wanted to fight him. <laughs> I literally wanted to fight him for a play like that. Did you pull a KG on Melo? I think No, yeah. I actually, I, I ran into him randomly in Atlanta, and he apologized. Oh, that's yeah, it was nice. a happy ending. What? <laughs> See, Florida Gators are, are respectful. Okay, that's what no, we do. That's not but what also, I, I like that this is, I mean, I don't like it, but it seems to be just like a bone bruise, right? It's not going to be anything long. It's, it's like a he, painful spot. Yeah, it just sucks. It just hurts. Yeah, just, As an old person, I can tell you the it's hip It's going to be an acre. Are, yeah, you no. are old. Thank you, Chandler. Um, look, Josh Giddy's still on the floor. Probably need to address this at this point. Uh, the latest on what is going on with him and the league. The NBA is looking into the allegations. 
that Josh Giddy was having an improper relationship with a minor. It surfaced on social media last week. Giddy and the team to this point have declined comment, and the Thunder believe that right now he's, he's going to continue to play. There's nothing to talk about. He's going to continue Oof. to be available. He played, he's been playing. Uh, that's a decision that, that the Thunder have made, and there's been no evidence otherwise. And so the NBA probe ongoing. But for, for now, Josh Giddy will continue to play for the Thunder as they look into the, the, the veracity, the accuracy of, of these allegations. That's not great. Uh, good. Let's talk about something else. We want to talk about that. Uh, Holmgren. Holmgren, rookie of the year. Major impact on the race for him so far. He has the second best odds um, and, of course, trails Wemby, as we know. But OKC is actually really good. Their schedule, is, their, their record is much better. So, yeah, at this point, Holmgren's getting it, right? It's his to lose. It's, it seems like it. It's, it's his to lose. He's, yeah, he's the best rookie. He's putting up the best stats on the best team. So I, I, I don't see how he doesn't run away with this. I think the, the Thunder are going to continue to win games. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when he's doing things like this, making shots like this, showing his versatility, he's unbelievable. He's an absolute star. I know it hurts me to say that, but I feel like this is, unless something crazy happens, maybe they just go into the toilet a little bit. It's in a bag already. <laughs> but Wimby, there are, the Spurs are already in the toilet, so he's just going to do I know, but he could shine. <laughs> Everything he does could he be shine shiny. Brighter shiny. that toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We it's Chet's. To, it, there's no way Chet's he's not winning. Unless he literally knock on what does it, gets hurt. Oh, right. That's no, the only that. way he doesn't win this. Bless. Yeah. Knock on wood. Here we go. We're not going to win. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Uh, take it, we're going to take a quick break here, I, these two. When we come back, oh, thank God, someone to rescue us. Jeff Teague will join the show. Jeff, we will be with Lighten you up, soon. Jeff. It's going to be a good one, bud. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got the energy, I got the will to survive, I got the energy, it's so spectacular, I got the energy, energy, I got energy, energy, that's right, joining us now, a 12-year NBA vet, a champ, an all-star, but really the podcast right now is the thing that is blowing up, Jeff Teague joins us, and Jeff, I want to get right off the bat, because I know you and Lou were teammates at one point, I need a story about Lou before Lou gives us a story about you, go. <laughs> Nah, Lou was always the coolest dude in the room. Uh, still the coolest dude in the room. So <laughs> some of the stories I can't tell about me and Lou, man. We had some good times. Thank that. you, Jeff. And and <laughs> and the feeling is mutual. I have no stories. Oh as well. come on, you guys are. I, I have no stories <laughs> as well. Not how TV works. <laughs> nothing. Nah, oh, I got fine. I got nothing PG enough. We could share. It's early in the morning. It's, it's We've basically had some time, night. Though. We've had some time. Okay. Jeff, <laughs> give, 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 a, give us one good Lou moment as a teammate, because I never played with Lou. I, w I feel like me he's and Lou would have been great teammates. But give us No, a Lou is bad teammate, because he's thrown us under the bus already, and we've been on this show you for two minutes. You got to let that go. You no, got to let that heal, let Michelle. Go. You got to let that heal. Is he a good teammate or a mm, teammate? Nah, he's the best teammate. He's, he's definitely top three of my teammates. That's what I'm talking about, dog. Appreciate, hey, appreciate. That's the first time I heard that too. That might be for wow. TV, but thank you, bro. <laughs> nah, appreciate that. I tell everybody that we had a segment on our show about you. That's what's I was up. Telling everybody, yeah. That's what's up. Top three. I wonder who the other two were. Who are the other two? Yeah. Kyle Corver. He was a great teammate. And Al Horford. Oh, oh that's that's uh, good company right there. All right. Two so amazing that. teammates. Yeah, that's that's fire. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, we talked earlier about the hack of Drummond that mm. went on in Boston last mm -hmm. night. You know, even though they were up 30 points or whatever they were up. If you were on the Bulls, though, how upset would you have been last night? I wouldn't have been mad. I mean, you got to make free throws. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. You could have had 20 points. <laughs> but e even, you know, sticking with this whole in-season tournament thing, the Hawks pulled their starters mm. last night and the Cavs kept theirs in, kind of running up the score. Is that just something now you, you deal with because it's the new norm, or is that, is that get under your skin? I mean, you're probably going to remember it, but it's the norm now. I mean, they're trying to win. They're trying to find themselves it's still kind of early in the season. So, I mean, I ain't really mad at them. I mean, I'm a high school coach now, so I'm trying to run up the scope. <laughs> <laughs> that me. I see. I don't never understood the sensitivity about running. That's the whole point, I thought. But then there's yeah. there's the Draymond Green of it all. He was, he was back from his suspension last night and just 
then gets a tee in the fourth quarter. It riles up the Sacramento crowd, as it should. Um, but we, we've been asking the guys this morning, at this point, is what Draymond does causing more harm than good? Oh, look, I love Draymond. So I'm going to ride with Draymond. Uh, whatever he got going on, they champions. They're going to figure it out. But, uh, I mean, as you said, they always go through a rough patch in the year at the beginning of the year, these last couple of years. So I think they'll figure it out. Do you think there will ever, because that seems to be the, the answer that people give, right? They love Draymond, and so for that reason, he kind of gets the pass. But will there ever come a day where it's just too much? For example, the chokehold. For you, what was your opinion <laughs> on the chokehold scene around the world? Uh, it, it was funny to me. He, <laughs> He hell, man. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Bro, crazy. But I wouldn't have did it, but uh, I understand why he did it. They had a little past history, so he thought it was his moment, and he took advantage of it. I mean, it cost him in the end, but shit, it was funny. It was good TV for me. My bad. <laughs> 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 so I feel like no one, no one has Rudy's back. Um, Jimmy Butler didn't play last night, but you were in Minnesota with him. And of course, there's the infamous practice that was <laughs> legendary uh, as far as taking on Cat and the rest of that team, the starters. You were there. I know it's been a minute, but it's still one of my favorite stories. What happened? Uh, he, <laughs> uh, he just had a moment in practice where he was killing. And uh, he wasn't really scoring. He was just making everybody better. And he was letting the GM and everybody know about it. And I just kind of appreciate it because I ain't never seen somebody talk to the GM like that. And I was like, hey, that's kind of hard. I need that kind of pull. And it never happens. <laughs> it never happened for me. So when I actually got some pull, they was trading me. So it was over. With. <laughs> hey, you know, you, you've been in the league a long time and everybody knows how, how documented we, we were just speaking about the cat and the Jimmy drama. Is that one of the better beefs that you've seen? in the league that you've been a part of? It wasn't really beef, because Cat wasn't trying to beef with him. Like, Cat, Cat was more <laughs> like trying to fall in line with him, but uh, it, it, I can't really see, you know how it work. It was like, Cat, go to the front office, Jimmy, go to you. So it's different, <laughs> like, yeah. it ain't really no beef. Nick, so Cat, for whatever reason, gets a lot of disrespect from players, fans. You played with him. Is, why, why is that? Like, why does that keep happening to him? I don't know, because he's one of the best players in the league. I think it's because he changed his voice in his interviews. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, for real, bro. I think people think he make himself like, a, He make himself an easy target by doing stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, facts, bro. But he's really cold. Like I told you before, I think he's one of the best players in the league. People thought I was crazy, and I was like, he remind me of, he ain't as tall as, tall as Wimby, but like his skill set, when I first met him, he was doing all that stuff. Hmm. But I think he just get a bad rap for stuff like that off the court. You, you, uh, you always, I mean, you recently said that there's nobody worse than a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. <laughs> no, I ain't say that, bro. <laughs> That's why we're here. Let's, clean, let's clean everything up. That's what my notes say. Let's, let's clean everything up. Yeah, that's what? what they said about it. They don't like me. So, <laughs> future. Got it, got it, got it. You yeah. should, I mean, you should know that. Well, I, think, most. I think the Memphis Grizzly fans are right up there with them. Fair but. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got their own personal experience, I guess. I, so I got I to gotta ask, because recently we saw Scott Foster and, and CP go through that thing. But you've also had your thing with, with CP, and you, you've expressed it on your podcast, Club 520, by the way. Everybody check, check out Jeff's uh, podcast. What, what, started, what started that with you and CP? I don't got beef with CP. It's just like, you know, you go to Wake Forest, and you kind of look at him as a mentor. And... It just, you just didn't get that love no more once you got in the league, but I understood it. Like, it's competition. Hmm. But after that, he just kind of like, with little bro me, and I'm like, bro, I ain't really had no big, I got a real big brother, he ain't gonna keep little bro on me, bro. Like, <laughs> you only like a couple years older than me. Right. So I just didn't appreciate that kind of stuff he had said to me, so kind of came like that, bro. Not your bro, bro. That's, uh, not your bro, bro. No, that's yeah. fair. See, Lou? Clear, clearing that up. Uh, 2016, playing for the Hawks. You got LeBron and the Cavs on the other side of things. Eastern Conference <laughs> semis. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a, I guess it's a body check. Call it a body check. Right. Yeah, no, I, call, I count it. 
What I happened here? Jeff, you would have got, got 10 games if this was 2003 <laughs> for that. Look, I ain't get nothing. I ain't get a fine or nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you would have got 10 games for that show. That's your limitations. On LeBron? Yeah. So you would have good now. Oh, uh, yeah. Dray- Draymond would have been proud of you, boy. It's assault these days. I, I was out of pocket, bro. I was you, out of pocket. Oh. Why'd you do it? Oh. I was hating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. They, you know how Atlanta is. They cheering for him. I said, but hell no. Nah. I knew this was my last game for the Hawks, though, by the way. So I was like, cool. Oh, that's you, you left with a bag? <laughs> that's legend. Oh, uh, definitely. Okay, that's fair. I knew it was my last one, too. I'm out. But but seriously, Jeff, you guys were the best regular season team. I know one year you guys had like what four <laughs> starting lineup was 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 in the All Star game together one year. Yeah. Do you feel like you guys should have won a championship? Obviously, LeBron James came in the way, but did you do you feel like you guys should have won the ring one of these years? Mm, I'm gonna say I thought we could have made it to the finals. I thought we could have beat LeBron and them, but everybody started getting hurt, and then LeBron, being the player he is, he just started figuring this out. He like. Jeff T can't guard me one on one. I'm just gonna make him guard me, pick and roll, and it was over with. Mm. Yeah, uh, Jeff. There's been a few players. There's actually been a lot of players that have had my numbers that just always bust my ass. Who is that one guy that, for whatever reason, would just cook you every time? Shit, uh, the list is long. Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You play long enough, you go have a long. Well, who's list like, of a, guys like who's like a weird one? Like who, like who I've shouldn't never have? I never played to be a defender either. Though. So, uh, but I mean, all the great ones, they gave me buckets. I mean, shit, Lou gave me buckets. You gave everyone buckets. I'm a bucket. I'm, <laughs> I'm a bucket. bucket. I'm a bucket. I'm Thanks, a bucket. Lou. That, that's a fact. He was, I remember one year, we uh, the Pro Am uh, in Atlanta, and you went against Jerry Jack. I came and watched in the stands, and y'all was going back and forth. Y'all was arguing. And you were just playing with your homeboys. They had a home NBA squad. <laughs> <laughs> and you had like 55. We got a, was my pro team. We, we, like, we rigged uh, up. They just what? passed the ball until I shoot. That's, that's it? That's just how we play. Hey, but y'all beat them, though. <laughs> yeah, we're going to beat them every time. Though. See? I was like, yeah, he did. That's different. great. Yeah, you don't have to make it that. It's not that complicated. Um, Lou surprised us the other day. He said that Kawhi was one of the three funniest players uh, that he's ever played with. Is there a player that you've played with that's either really misunderstood or maybe we've just gotten completely wrong? Uh, I think Andrew Wiggins is really funny. I mean, he doesn't talk much, but if you get to know him, he's a super funny guy. Hmm. Uh, Tyus Jones is hilarious. Tyus Jones? Jones. It's a good one. Wouldn't guess that. He's hilarious. Yeah, what, like he, what makes them funny? Of, all the because their personalities, they just quiet, they reserved, and people don't get a, get to, get an opportunity to see their personality. So when just you mumbling. get them yeah. behind the scenes and yeah. in situations they where they're comfortable, yeah, they they just let loose. I know. Yeah, I like he that. jokes. That's how, that's how Kawhi yeah. is. Like behind closed doors, he runs the show. We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> Church room, Lou. So look, <laughs> <laughs> you're up. My, my bad. You've known you've been known to trash talk a little bit. Do I? That's what they say. I was trying to tell okay. them that you was you was quiet. You might get upset sometimes, and you might trip like That's the fair. like like the LeBron push. <laughs> who's 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 the most annoying person? Oh wow. I got a I got a couple because we done been in some battles together. But who's the most annoying person you would say that's trash talking on the court? Uh, the most annoying was probably Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I know you got a story, Lou. <laughs> but, that's for us. I'm gonna leave that alone. Yeah. No, no, no. We gonna. <laughs> nah, <Sean. laughs> nah We gonna leave that alone. A, oh, but Jeff and Jeff and Dennis, they had they had they had their little thing going on in practice a lot, man. Competitive spirit. Yeah, he that's was supposed to know. It. You know what's bad when he's when he's when he's saying one of his teammates. <laughs> <laughs> We were looking for like a Pat Bev, someone you played against. You went with your back. Nah, he was, nah, he was annoying, man. But I mean, that's that's what makes him him, man. He's a competitor, but he definitely was annoying. Did I you mean, play Pat against? Bev, did you play against Prime KG? Oh. Hey, man, he was crazy. <laughs> KG that would say, on all fours one oh, time he would say some things to you on the floor. Wait, Personal. What? He did what? Got on all fours and barked at me in a playoff game. <laughs> I said, dude, crazy. Dude, ain't got it out, man. That's amazing. Jeff, speaking of KG, That's... he recently said some crazy comments that Jordan Poole oh, yeah. doesn't belong in the NBA. <laughs> he tripped. Yeah. 
What nah, we... I mean, Jordan Poole, he, he's still cold. He's just having a bad moment right now. But he deserves to be in the league. Right. I mean, I get what KG talking about. You know, he's more passionate about stuff. Oh, man. Uh-oh, tech. Technology kicking in. We got it. No. Uh -oh. oh, no. Who's that? Is that us? Is he gone? Did we lose him? He got, we lost him to a FaceTime. We lost oh. him. I bet somebody, Schroeder I bet somebody called him. Schroeder is called Dennis him. Called <laughs> Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> Dennis Schroeder on line yeah. one. By the way, I don't think that's ever happened where you ask somebody about so, like, Lou, a trash talker. <laughs> you you might have been there. Maybe you. What, what happened between Dennis Schroeder yeah. and Jeff T? No, well, Jeff was the starting point guard. Dennis is coming yeah. over from, from Germany. Um, Dennis had quite the reputation in Germany. We didn't really, we weren't really. What kind from, of reputation? Well, a good one. Well, he was a pro already. Oh, great one. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. So we didn't really, we didn't really know who he was, uh, know much about him, and he just had this thing with Jeff, and you know they were just dueling. He wanted, he wanted Jeff's job, and Jeff wasn't going oh, for well, it. Oh, that's fair. And it just created, just created some competitive energy in the gym. That's all. I can honestly say though, did not expect the teammate to be the answer. That was. I, I, I knew for a fact he was going to say Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> That's why I kind of laughed. That's but. amazing. By the way, you want to check out Jeff's podcast. He does have, he's got the stories um, wherever you get your podcast. When we come back, we got some power rankings. Jeff's phone died. Love that. And it died. It's okay. We'll be back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah. Yeah. We love lists. Everybody loves lists. We're going to start doing a, a top 10 power rankings at the end of each month because that will change, obviously. So teams starting with number 10. OK, I know this team is hot. They're currently second in the Eastern Conference, 12 and 5. Everyone knows they're not the second best team in the Eastern Conference. But Jamal Mosey has got these boys playing. Franz mm -hmm. Wagner, Paolo. I got the Orlando Magic mm -hmm. as the 10th seed, or 10th best team right now. I love that. At number nine, give me the Los Angeles Clippers. Not in a great run right now, but they have a lot of firepower, a lot of star Clippers. power. They can get this thing together. Once they get their, their lineups down pat, this team is gonna, gonna be dangerous coming down the stretch. And so, not a great ranking, but I still yeah. got them in the top 10. No, but seven yep. and nine. Hmm. Yep, and number eight, I'm gonna stick with uh, here in LA. I'm gonna go with the Lakers. Again, they're not off to the fastest start, but they have the talent, they have the experience. A lot of guys early on right now, it's 18, 19 games in, you're looking at this, the seeding. That doesn't tell you the full story of who's the best team. I got the Lakers in the eighth, in the eighth hole right now. <laughs> number seven, give me the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's a good one. This is a this is a great ranking for this basketball team. Mm -hmm. This is a young team, still growing, still learning, still figuring out different ways to win basketball games. So being being number seven is a great one for them. I even got them having an opportunity to move up throughout the season. Yep. At number six, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves. Again, they're number number one right now in the Western Conference. They're 13 and four. It's a great start. Again, are they the best team in the Western Conference? I don't think so. I think they'll kind of. Finish somewhere in that, you know, four, five, six range. So I think this is comfortable right now for them in the six. I'm screen grabbing it because I want to see what this looks like in two months. Yeah, yeah number five, <laughs> getting down to the nitty gritty Milwaukee Bucks in All the right, top five. I think from one through five, I think this is going to be consistently where these teams are going to be mm -hmm. uh, going down the stretch of the season. Middleton hooping really well. Dame Lillard has turned into to Dame Dollar. He's hooping, and obviously the, the, the Greek freak is doing his thing. And so I, I see this team moving up as well, but top five for the rest of the season for sure. Yep. At four, we got the Philadelphia 76ers. They obviously have the MVP and Joel Embiid. They have the rise of Tyrese Maxey. They're going to continue to get better when they keep getting healthier, when they get Kelly Oubre back, keep getting great minutes from Marcus Morris, Tobias Harris. Uh, you know, I think teams counted them out. I think people thought it was just the Celtics and Bucks, and they're going to run away with it. But they've showed that even the, the whole James Harden drama, they are, they are for real. Number like three, that. with all of that talent, Phoenix Suns. Hmm. Whether KD is out, you still have Devin Book on the floor. If Devin Book is out, you still have KD on the floor, and you have a Bradley Bill waiting in the wings to get his feet wet with an opportunity to make this group really special. So I like Phoenix at three. Okay. Number two, we're going to the defending champs. I, I, this was tough for me to not put them one uh, until they get knocked off. They struggled a little bit. They're 12 and six. Jamal Murray banged up. You can see the other night, even when those top guys are out, they still find ways to win games. They're deep. Reggie Jackson's been super valuable. It just showed DeAndre Jordan can continue to play at a high level. Give me the Denver Nuggets, and, and if they're not, they're not going to go down. They're only going to go up. Drum roll. That one is that San Antonio. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what? 
Number one. One day. Give us the Boston Celtics. I picked Jason Tatum as this year's MVP. So far, so good. I, I'm looking like a genius 18 mm -hmm. games in. Wow. Celtics with one of the yeah. best records in the league. I like him at number one. genius, and though, Lou. We, we said gonna, this preseason. Listen, Jeff, Jeff Teague said I was one of his favorite teammates. Mm -hmm. That qualifies me no as a wrong. genius. I love that Lou I'm thinks I'm supposed Wednesday. to heal yeah. because you threw us under the bus and you I, want me to just listen, move Listen, I was new at TV and I panicked, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. I blacked out. Here's the, I blacked out. Here is the, uh, our first of the season power rankings. I think that left side is definitely going to be the one to keep your eye on as that will probably change the most. But I'm with you, Lou. I think the right side will just kind of, they'll move within each other. Right. That'll be it. Yeah, it's just, it'll be a back and forth. I, I actually, I'm going to say the Milwaukee Bucks are going to find themselves top two. That's I, fair. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to Boston, Milwaukee on the east side and on the west. East side. I really like, uh, I really like Phoenix or Denver. Yeah, and again, I think the, I think some teams on that six to ten. Yeah. They go out. They might we might see them. Alright, that's it for us. We'll be back tomorrow to wrap up the week. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back.